Hello, this is the fourth tutorial video about Artemis Mission Editor and in this video I'll talk a little about what I have added in editing the conditions on the space map and about the new feature, the dependencies, showing the dependencies for the nodes. So first of all, you can now edit conditions like object is located inside outside sphere box on the space map. Here you can change the name of the object if you if you like. You can change whether it's in or out and whether it's sphere or the box. To move the center of the sphere you just click the map or use the space key and you use the alt left click to set radius as usual and control mouse wheel or just the mouse wheel to change the vertical position of the sphere center. You can change sphere to a box by using Ctrl Alt, just like you do with the nameless objects like nebulas and asteroids. You can switch their mode from line to sphere by using Ctrl Alt click. Here it's the same. Or you can just change it here in the property editor. To change the inside, outside, you can use the Alt scroll wheel like this. If it's in inside mode, meaning that the condition will be fulfilled if the object is inside the sphere or the box, marks on the edges will point outwards. And if it's the outside condition, meaning the if the object is outside the sphere of or a box, the condition will be fulfilled. Then the markings will go inwards. Same with the box. So this is the outside mode, meaning that everything outside fulfills the condition. This is the inside mode, meaning everything inside will fulfill the condition. And to edit the box, you also use space or left click and alt left click to move the two points. They are marked with a circle and with the square. You move the circle by left click or space and you move the box by alt left click. So here's that. And as usual, you confirm the changes and here they are. So, with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about the dependency graph. Often in big missions, uh, you have a task to see, for example, this exact event, when will it happen? Like, which event starts this timer or which event sets this variable to a value other than 1 or which, which event sets chapter to 1, etc. For that, you now have the dependency form. You can use F4 to open the form and calculate the dependencies for the select event or start node. Or you can use Shift F4 just to open the form, if you, for example, have closed it, you can just reopen the form without calculating the links. For example, if you hover on event 8, Shift F4 will open the information for the previous node you calculated the dependencies for, which is the start node, and F4 would recalculate the dependencies for the event you have selected. So let's see how it looks. In this form, the button over here represents the event or the start node for which the dependencies are calculated. And clicking on that, you can make it selected in the main form. And you have a list of preceding and succeeding events or start nodes. The list of preceding events or start nodes is the list of nodes that set something which fulfills the conditions of the current event. And the list of succeeding nodes is the list of nodes that have conditions which are fulfilled by the statements, the actions in the current event. So in this case, the event 7 here, it has one preceding node, the start node, because it sets the variable chapter to 1. And it has two succeeding nodes, uh, the event 80 and event 20. 
Event 80 is a succeeding, succeeding node to event 7 because the event 7 sets a rec Artemis timer and event 18 fires requires timer rec Artemis timer to be finished. And event 20 is a succeeding node because the event 7 sets confiscate weapons timer to 16 seconds while event 20 requires that timer to be finished. This might be a, a bit confusing for you, this, this way of showing information. I wanted to put all the necessary information in one string, so I'll explain what all this means. The first, the first word in the square brackets means what kind of connection this is. Connection can be strong enough or weak, or a combination of strong and enough. Strong means that the preceding event, in this case the start node, has uh, some uh, set variable or set timer statements that are exclusive to this mission. They are not set anywhere else. So, for example, in this case, this connection is marked as strong because the set chapter to one only happens in the start node. No other node, no other event or start node in the mission sets variable chapter to value one. So this uh, this node, start node, must happen before event 4 happens. Same is for this VIX welcome timer. Only start node sets this timer, so the start node must happen before event 4 can happen. Now there is one exclusion to this rule. For example, if you look here, variable starring not equals 1. Uh, here the mission creator just used the fact that all variables start with a value of 0. So uh, there is no event in the mission which sets variable starring to something. This condition just always equates to true, and when this event fires, the variable starring is set to 1, and it no, is no longer true, so this event, event can't happen again. In this case, for example, if there would be somewhere uh, some uh, event that sets starring to 1 to 0, it will show as a strong link. But in reality, there would be another possibility for this event too to happen. And that is, just at the start of the mission, the starring one is always equal to zero, so it will always happen. But other than that, uh, this strong keyword will help you identify which nodes are strongly linked, meaning which, which nodes must happen before some other node. The word enough in this case, strong plus enough, meaning it's both strong and enough. Enough, tell me if I'm wrong, in Russian enough means that truth of some statement is enough for the other statement to also be true. So the enough link means that preceding event, or start node, has all the conditions fulfilled in order to the succeeding node to fire. This minus over here means that in addition to a variable and timer conditions, there are also space map conditions like player space, ship is docked, or amount of Demcon members, or some object properties checked against some value. So in this case, uh, strong plus enough minus means that start node has all the variables and timers set, but the event 7 node also has some space map related conditions which also must be fulfilled for event 7 to fire. But the start node has fulfilled everything else. All variables and timers are set there. And in case there is no minus here, this means that the preceding event fulfills everything for the succeeding event to happen, and it will happen either immediately or after all timers are finished. Now, the link can also be weak, meaning that it's not strong or enough, meaning that there are other events that set this variable and that not all conditions are fulfilled by this, the predecessor. Now the next three numbers in the square brackets, the first two digits, the first number, stands for the amount of strong conditions fulfilled by the preceding node. In this case, both the conditions are strongly linked, uh, which means that both set chapter and week's welcome timer are exclusive to the start node and are not set anywhere else in the mission. 
or in this case, the set value chapter is unique or set timer TMP is unique to the start node. The next two digits, two numbers, is the amount of conditions fulfilled by this preceding node. So in this case, the start node fulfills two out of the three conditions of the event four condition list. And in this case, it fulfills one out of one conditions of the event one condition list. And the third number is the total amount of conditions not counting the space map conditions. So in this case, there's one condition which isn't about a space map and one which is about a space map. And in this case, there are four conditions, variable, variable, timer, variable, this number four here, uh, plus uh, one condition, which is the space map condition, this is between Artemis and Hammock Base, which is this number one here. The next number, as I already said, is the amount of space map conditions. The number after it is the amount of seconds, which is the biggest timer. So, for example, here, this 75 seconds means that event five will happen 75 seconds later than the start node. That's because the payment plan timer is set to 75 seconds. Or in this case, uh, the event number one will happen one second after the start node because the timer TMP is set to one second. Or here the starting timer one is set to 10 seconds. So here's that. And the last one is the percent chance for the event to happen. For example, if we make some events which sets some variable to a random float with range 0 to 1, and then we make some event which checks for this variable to be greater than 0 0.6, obviously the chance will be 40% that this event, 126, happens after event 125. Uh, same with the integer. Let's say random integer from 1 to 100, uh, whatever. And here we say greater than 45. Then we have 55% chance here for this event to happen after setting variable to render range. Then goes after those uh, preceding stuff in square brackets, uh, follows the name of the event. In case you are looking at the preceding list, this is the name of predecessor event. So event 125 is the predecessor to event 126. And in case you are looking at the succeeding list, this is the name of the successor event, meaning event four is a succeeding event to the start node. After it, uh, go the list of the statements involved in this link. For example, here. Here it shows that the event 4 is linked to the test uh, to the start node because the start node sets chapter to 1 and weeks welcome timer to 54. And basically the event 4 checks for chapter being equal to 1 and for timer, weeks welcome timer to be finished. So that's why those two are the link. For example, event one depends on the timer TMP, so it shows that this event is linked because the start node sets timer TMP to one second, and the event one needs timer TMP to be finished. Or in this case, event two needs timer starting timer one to be finished, and start node sets timer starting timer one to 10 seconds, so that's why it showed here. In the preceding list, the same list of statements is shown, and this time it means that uh, the start node is the predecessor to the event node because it sets timer TMP to one second, and the event one node needs that timer to be finished. So here's that. I am welcome to suggestions on how I can make this interface uh, easier to use. Oh yeah, in case I didn't tell you, you just click the list and the event you click will be selected in the main form as well as uh, all the statements 
relative to this link will be highlighted. So for example, if we have something like, like here, we select the succeeding event four for the succeeding start node and the conditions which are fulfilled by the start node are highlighted. Or we select event two and select the preceding node start node and the action set timer starting time to 10 seconds is highlighted because event two is linked to the start node because the start node sets the timer event two needs to be finished. You can also use the arrows and click enter to highlight the node. So for example, highlight event two, I mean select event two, select event five, select event 92, and clicking on the button selects the event for which preceding and succeeding nodes are displayed. And also the numbers here show the amount of succeeding or preceding nodes in the list. So for example, you don't, you don't have to click on this tab because you already know there's nothing there, there's zero. Well, one last word is that the find and replace form also uses selection, uh, selection like this, and those are mutually exclusive. So for example, if we use the find all, find the all to select the nodes which were found, then we use the F4 to see the predecessors of this node, we will overwrite the highlights from the find replace to the highlights from dependency dependency form over here. If that's not desired, also give me feedback. Maybe I should make two uh, two different highlights, one for the dependencies and one for the find all or replace all results. So that's it. Once again, this ability is available through the Tools menu or by clicking F4 or Shift F4. I hope this is useful for you. So, thanks for watching.